Hey, what's up, everybody? Craig Rizzoli here with High Speed Daddy. I've also got my buddy. Oh, I was about to shoot the wrong way. Corey here. <laughs> Corey is actually, uh, for those of you that don't know, Corey's with Lean Green Dad. He's a fellow dad buddy of mine. He helps us out with High Speed Daddy stuff as well. Uh, we don't give him enough credit for that, but he's doing an awesome job helping us out there. Um, well, but thank also you, thank you. <laughs> for all of our audiences following us right now, High Speed Daddy, the High Speed Daddy Facebook, Provide, Protect, Connect group, as well as our friends over at Culture City. Thank you, everyone, for watching us today. If, if you're in watching us directly right now or later on, let us know that you're here. Say hello. Drop us a line. Tell us where you are and how you found us. That would be awesome. Um, Heck yeah. Yeah, definitely. Always, always love learning more about our customers, where they're coming from, why they're following us, what they're getting out of all this and stuff, because that helps us improve on what we deliver back to you and the value that we provide, right? So... Uh, always good to drop comments in there and let us know so we can learn a little bit more. Heck yeah. Uh, I'm going to pull up the High Speed Daddy Provide, Protect, Connect private Facebook group because there's sometimes the comments come through and we can't even see them, like who it was. But um, let's see. Let's see who was that comment. Somebody commented recently. I think it might have been Vincent. I'm not sure though. Hang on. We got, a, we got a few people commenting right now. Some of them say Facebook user. I can't exactly tell, but let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you who it was All right. it in the meantime. Was, okay. It was, uh, Gory G Carfora. Oh, okay. I know Gory. Gory is, is part of, yep. GL we call him. GL is part, oh. <laughs> GL is part GL. of our, uh, uh, a locals men's group, um, that I'm personally part of uh, a small Sweet. men's group in a town that I live in, uh, which I always encourage people to do by the way, uh, to join local groups and meetups and things like that. Um, and especially if you're coming out of the high speed daddy provide protect connect group, which is a online men's group, um, getting in person with other men as well to discuss, um, uh, issues you're going through great things that are happening, stuff that's working for you that could work for other men as well. Um, and just, uh, getting out there and getting stuff off your chest is always helpful. So, yeah. you know, if you guys got a chance to do that, definitely recommend it and something to do. I'm but, changing my light. Can you see it? Look there, at you change your light. My light is not the best today. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm going to apologize on that. Uh, I'm on a little family vacation uh, and not in my normal studio where it's just a brick wall in the background. <laughs> so That's some people right. might like this better. They may not. I'm not sure. It oh, looks like uh, Dan Dan Mernicke is saying, what's up, old man? Oh, Rizzoli. wow. <laughs> so... All right. So there, there's something we'll get into today's topic in just a second. You know, you got to start yeah. off with a little BS and stuff like that to begin. Yeah, a little uh, banter. Yeah, a little banter. So Dan, um, Dan was a fellow soldier that I went through basic training, army basic training with several years ago. Uh, and for those of you that haven't read the about me section on High Speed Daddy website uh, or about us, um, you know, it gives you a little bit description of my background personally and how I joined the military uh, a bit later in life, actually at 30 years old, where the average age was about 17 to 23 or something like that for, for men going through Army Infantry Boot Camp. Uh, so um, so Dan was actually one of the fellow soldiers and one of the younger guys that, that came through that I helped. He helped me. You know, We helped each other get through that stuff. So Dan, thank you for coming on. I haven't spoken to you in years, brother. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And then Sean's watching from Jersey. Michael's in California. Uh, Sean says, thank you for your service. Awesome. Appreciate the support. Um, thank you, everybody. So yeah, let's, let's kind of tap into, oh, and Joey's here too. Hey, Joey, what's up, man? Um, <laughs> oh, and Joey's here because Joey's here. <laughs> you gotta, like, I love, I love little, Joey. Joey's like, here. We, we always expect you to be here, Joey, because you're like our number one fan. All right. So I, mean, it, 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 I love the yeah. fact that you're here all the time. And Joey's yeah. got great things that are coming down the pike to help a lot of people with. Um, so that people know, and I'll get that out there. And Joey's done a video or two for us already on some of our products, and he will be doing more to help explain our products and some different ways to use them. So thank you. Yeah. Heck yeah. But, All right. So what are we talking about today, Craig? Today, what are we, what are we talking about? Uh, um, you know, we, we have emails that come out every week, by the way. Uh, if you get on those emails, you can get a little bit advance notice on what's going on and what's going to happen and what we're going to talk about. But today we're actually talking about in, in just summarizing real quick, what what do you do when basically you and your kid has different have different interests? They yeah. want, and this isn't just like, hey, I want to do this today. And no, it's not that. It's it's like overall. For example, and just a quick example is, let's say I'm really into sports. I love watching football, baseball, basketball, ESPN, and I'm pointing to this guy here. 
Um, <laughs> all the time. All the time. All the, all the time. Sports Center on in the background. Exactly what's going on. No, However, it's just the app. The app always. There, always. there you go. But what do you do if your kid has no interest in sports whatsoever? Now, do you kind of start forcing them into it? Do you start signing them up for this and that? And like, oh, they'll just get used to it or something like that. But what if your kid has an interest in playing an instrument and not a sport or something like that? Or your kid has an interest in reading books yeah. and not playing sports. And yeah. I'm not saying this is like a jocks versus nerds thing at all. This is just life, right? And you guys can relate to this, I'm sure, with friends that you have or family members that are kind of similar where you may like one thing a lot and they don't really like it but where do you kind of find a common ground how do you go into that um and yeah. i got a couple ideas around and i, I talked to you for those of you uh that have wa- continued to watch us i was speaking with george he couldn't meet uh, he couldn't make it today but speaking with him uh he told us some stuff that he wanted to come across as well but Corey, do you have anything like that with your kids because you got three kids you know that you have an interest that they don't or vice versa I do. So, you know, um, I wasn't a huge sports kid when I was growing up, but uh, my parents did have me playing sports for the team, the team aspect. Right. So I played little league baseball. I played basketball in high school and then uh, not on the high school basketball team. I just played in high school. I want to be very clear. (laughs) And then, uh, as I, as I got older and, you know, uh, became an adult and stuff like that. I did more fitness stuff in the gym. And so I have been rather active my entire life. Started working out when I was 14 in the bench press and all that stuff, right? And so when I had my first son, my first boy, you know, he's nine, I was just couldn't wait to watch sports with him and hang out and stuff like that. And so it didn't really end up that way in a sense that um, my girl is the athletic one. My firstborn girl is the athletic one. Um, my middle son, you know, Roger, my nine-year-old, he's just kind of like not really into being super active. And so I find myself at the very beginning, I was like, oh no, what's he going to do for fitness and stuff like that? But the truth is I can get him to move his body. He can move his body and he can be fit, but I don't think he's ever going to be like super athletic. And so you know, I was a, I was a, an Ironman triathlete and I was training for triathlons and stuff. And I would have them come to the races and stuff. They were really small. I think Izzy and Roger were like three and five or something mm-hmm. at the time. And so they didn't really get what daddy was doing, but it it's now here I am older and I want to, I want to ride bikes with them. Right. Roger has like no interest in riding bikes. And Izzy's like, daddy, let's go. Let's ride bikes. Let's mm-hmm. go. Let's go. And so I got her a speed bike. Like we are just flying, flying down the street <laughs> together. And it's so much fun. And, um, you know, I think Raj eventually will watch maybe some sports with me, but he just doesn't really care unless it's, um, super active and tells a really good story. Um, so the funny thing is WWE, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he absolutely loves WWE because there's characters, there's activity, they're moving around and, uh, there's the theatrics. And so mm-hmm. that's what we, that's what we bond together. So was it exactly like I thought it was going to be? Uh, not so much, but who cares? Like it's still spending time with my dude and each child is totally unique. And so I have the opportunity to bond with each of my kids and, uh, and not trying to set up, you know, like George kind of mentioned, um, when you talk to him, it's like not setting up another me, like they don't have to play basketball. They don't have to play baseball or ride a bike and do triathlons. They just get to be them. And I get to support that. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. And, th- and that's exactly elaborating on what, what I spoke about with George and what you just said there. You're raising an individual. You're not raising another mini me, another version of you. You're raising someone that um, you want them to grow up to have the choice to choose what they want to do uh, and, and pursue. Right. So, for example, I come from a soccer family. I'll, I have an older brother, younger sister, all three of us pretty well accomplished soccer players. My sister went on to play D1 soccer and all stuff like that in college. Um you know, and I'll, I'll take some credit for helping her out along the way there, but, <laughs> but you know, my, my, my oldest, my son took right into soccer really early, really quick. And I was like, cool, this is easy. Like I can help him along, blah, blah. And then he wanted to get into T-ball and I never played baseball in my life. Never kind of watched baseball, didn't have an interest. And he got into T-ball and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to let the coaches kind of take over here. I'll stand back and let them do this thing. And he tried it out and just wasn't really his forte too much. And I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Maybe just stays with soccer or whatever. But then my daughter came along and it came about time for her to start playing soccer. I was like, okay, well, 
she's been watching her older brother play soccer for a couple of years now. It's, you know, a few years. Let's let's get her into it. Sign her up. And she was that kid that stood on the field and just watched everyone else play. Ball would get right past her. They kick it to her. She'd just kind of step away. She'd walk off the field and be like, is it snack time? And, and like steam furious because I didn't know how to react to that because things were so easy and natural progression in line with uh, kid number one, kid number two of just like, no. However, she came into her own uh, into like gymnastics and like, we're probably going to pursue some version of dance uh, and things like that because that's what she likes. That's what she's interested in. And you're never going to be able to force a kid to do something that they don't have an interest in. And you, I can't really say that. You probably could force them to do it. It's going to backfire. They're going to regret it. They're going to resent. Um, and these could be things that maybe like come out later on in life, you know, yeah. uh, of a version of resentment and things like you made me do this for that many years and et cetera, et cetera. So it's more what, what a good thing to do is to introduce them and give them the opportunities saying this is out there. This is out there. Show them. I mean, now we're in a an age of digital stuff. You can look anything up online. I mean, Corey and I grew up yeah. at the very beginning of the internet, right? Where you said, look, yeah, I mean, like you had to ask people to be like, show you how to play sports, not just look yeah. it up on YouTube. So you can introduce them and be like, does that interest you? Does that look interesting? Would you like to do something like that? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, instead of just being like, we're signing you up and you're doing this, you know? And like, yeah. that's kind of how we grew up a little bit, but times have changed and it's time to get with the times. To, yeah. to, you know, get a little bit more, um, you know, ad- advanced with that to help and introduce kids into it in a more sensible way of sorts. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's not, I mean, we're just talking sports here, but this could go with anything. I mean, last week or the week before, I'm sorry, I forget. Uh, we were talking about camping, right, Corey? You know, and, yeah. and I told the personal story that like I, I came up through the scouts, uh, then went into military and like camping and outdoors is, is my thing. My father glamps. My father hates camping, but he got me involved with a community that would, um, you know, help me out. And and uh, I forget the word I'm looking for, but, you know, help, help um, advance my interest. Right. You know, and, and you know, pursue it. He just kind of, you know, uh, had them help me along with that because he didn't know and didn't have an interest in doing that. But he still wanted to help me out and um, and, and pursue that that interest. So. Yeah. There's different things you can do uh, to do that. So do to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yours, yours are still super young. I mean, mine are 12, nine mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. five. And so I can tell you for sure, like my youngest is going to be uh, crazy, crazy. Uh, what do you call that thing? Um, we jumping around buildings and stuff. Oh, parkour or something like that. Dude, Yes. Parkour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like a freaking parkour. Little maniac. Ninja. I mean, all, yeah. Oh yeah. Off the couches and like just off his bed, never gets hurt. Just like made of rubber. It's just unbelievable. And, um, he has like, a, he's five years old. He's got a crazy six pack. <laughs> it's, it's just <laughs> disgusting. Like he's got a baby belly because he's just five. Right. But at the same time, when he, when he tightens his stomach, you can see all six abs, like super clear. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so he got the best of the genetics, I guess, from both sides of the family because he's crazy. You but, know, and, uh, and to elaborate on that some more, right. So your kid's jumping off couches, doing this, blah, blah, blah. And it's so easy to say, don't do that. You're not supposed to do yeah. that. Don't yeah. be so wild, blah, blah, blah. And even myself, I've had a lot of problems with being a little bit too much helicopter or wanting to protect the kid from getting hurt or something along those lines. Don't do this. Don't do that. And just recently, I've gotten really self-aware of stopping myself before saying that stuff. Yeah. Don't jump. Don't jump into rain puddles. Don't jump into puddles with boots on or something like that. Right. You got to let kids be kids. Right. Yeah. You got to let them explore. You got to let them learn these things. Sometimes you have to learn mistakes on their own as well. Right. You know, they're going to fall off the couch, bump their head. You know, it's, Hey, don't jump off the couch again. Right. But it's true. If you see this interest that they have of jumping a lot or doing something long, know that there's a lot of stuff out there that you can help help them pursue those interests, such as Corey said, a ninja. My son goes to a ninja class. That's very much, uh, it's, it's in a ninja warrior class, right? So same thing, parkour, little miniature versions. Uh, it's run through a gymnastics facility, but it has, you know, the curve wall to climb up and things like that. 
get his energy out and and get that fix that he wants of climbing all over the place, right? So very similar, Corey. Yeah, um, I just uh, I I just love being open to whatever they want to do. I mean, yeah. like even even with art, right? We're talking about sports, mm -hmm. but like my kids are crazy artists. Like they're so visual and they mm -hmm. just work so hard at making these awesome paintings or. I have this dry erase board behind me that I just make notes on all the time because of the nature of my job. And um, they will take my dry erases and go draw on the sliding glass door. <laughs> and I mean, it just erases right off and they yeah. know not to color on the floor or whatever. Um, but it's a, a great thing just to support that, that part of their brains to Yeah, the creativity, definitely. And, and I want to give a shout out to, I want to give a shout out to Sean real quick. Hang on. So he says he grew up without cell phones. Yeah. Had the beeper oh, in high school. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Turn, turn it off and on just so it beeps and it looks like you have some. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm cool. Yeah. Um, so so we, we've talked a little bit about this in the past. Um, I honestly feel I'm, hold, I'm probably holding my kids back from technology more than, more than it should. Um, I am too. I am be, too. Let's talk about that. Yeah, because... Uh, you know, because of that, I want them to be outside. I want them to enjoy. I don't want technology to take over their lives. I don't want them to play video games for eight hours a day and things along those lines. However, you're, they're growing up in a technological world that they need to know how to do some of this stuff. I know in my, the town that I live in, uh, they start, you know, um, they start on iPads, like when they get to school or, or tablets uh, of, of sorts, as soon as they get in kindergarten to learn how to do these things. I mean, I was probably in third or fourth grade, uh, right, Corey, something along those lines yeah. before we yeah. were introduced to like computer class at school with the big old school desktops and the, you know, the commie 64s and whatnot. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, it, but there's, there's things that you can start introducing them to in little video games. And there are some things out there for hand eye coordination and whatnot. And, you know, I, I grew up with a Nintendo and a Sega and I never, my family never went out and bought the, the PlayStation and, and everything along those lines. But, you know, I still grew up with some version of, of video games to play. But you set containers on things or you use it as a reward. If the kid really, really wants to use it all the time, okay, cool, you can use it, but you need to do X, Y, Z before you use that. And you're only going to use that for whatever that container of time is, right? Mm -hmm. Or, uh, well, you know, whatever that container may be, whether it's time, whether it's until they finish a level or whatever it may be. Uh, so, but I do believe it's important that kids um, should know some version of technology. Uh, yeah. Especially in an emergency basis, you know, how to dial 911, things along those lines. Once they get to a certain age, how to use the phone, you know, what, how to turn it on or something along those lines. So what, what's yeah. your thoughts on it, Corey? Um, so for me, it's mostly social media, right? Like okay. I don't want my kids, mm -hmm. Your kids are a little bit older media. than mine. That's why I'm talking a little bit younger. My kids are seven, five, and two, right? So, yeah, 12, nine, and five. Mm -hmm. I, I, my 12 year old is the one that's basically like a 30 year old woman. I mean, she's unbelievable. Like, she's just so smart and so with it and very mature. Um, still a kid, still has her kid moments, of course, but very, very mature. And so I've always told her she's not going to have social media accounts. And I tell her it's for her own safety. And I tell her that, um, you know, daddy works in social media and I just want to make sure that um, you understand that even though your friends are going to have social media as you're growing up, you're, you're just not going to have it um, for, for a while. Right. And I just let her know that. And I know that I'm, I'm not mean about it. I'm not rude about it. And she actually took the stance of like, no dad, I understand. Like I understand. And it's cool. It's very so, mature of her. Yeah. It is. It's really cool. So like TikTok, for instance, right? Like all the kids are on TikTok or Snapchat, whatever. Snapchat is for like 13 year olds. So like mm -hmm. my daughter could fall in there, but she thinks it's kind of dumb. So I'm like, oh, thank goodness. But when it comes to TikTok, she really wants her own TikTok account. And so I dance with her on my TikTok account. Uh, and then my wife has a TikTok account. And she makes stuff there. And so the reason that I do this, the reason that I watch this stuff is I don't I don't know if kids are ready to take some of the trolling and some of the negative comments that might happen for the stuff mm -hmm. they put out there. I'm not saying they live with like rose tinted glasses and just think that everybody's going to love them all the time. But we both know that things can get pretty yeah. brutal. Like yeah. even with friends and gossip at school and stuff, it's yeah. unbelievable. My middle schooler tells me happens at middle school. Mm -hmm. So it's really just to keep things safe. Uh, 
for right now, I don't really need her. What if she's posting with like geo locations, like on by accident and everybody sees where we live. And then all of a sudden, I, I, don't, I don't know, man, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that I, I am unsure of, uh, my stance on it when she's old enough. I don't know. 18 maybe i guess i, I don't really know i don't yeah, really we'll know see. i'm not we'll, setting a hard fast rule but we'll just yeah. kind of see it's a lot of yeah. it's a lot of that you you cross that bridge when you get there right and i haven't yeah. i personally haven't thought about the social media stuff with my kids and they're not there yet and i don't want to freak out in fear and get yeah. all crazy in the head thinking about what i'm going to do because i'm not there yet it's good to plan don't get me wrong but at the same time that takes you away from being present and enjoying what's present right now with them uh, so for me, it's, you know, introducing them to certain things and whatnot. And this is, you know, a cell phone. You can swipe through pictures. You can take a picture, take yeah. a picture of me with a high-speed daddy backpack on, you know, something yeah. along those lines, <laughs> right? All the time. Uh, yeah, exactly. Every day, all the time. Walk around my little yep. videographer. We need to create but, UGC. Yeah. Come on, kids. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it, it's, you know, I, but it, I'm learning from from people like Corey, you know, and and using him as an example for what I can do or shouldn't do or should do and what I want to do when I get to that point and cross that bridge as well. So I, I don't I'm never going to take a stance on what's right or wrong on what you do with your kids. They're your kids. Right. So that's your decision on how you want to raise them. All we can do here is provide some suggestions from what we've uh, realized, what has worked or what hasn't worked from our experience. Maybe some stuff will resonate with you. Maybe some stuff won't. But that's how we're always going to be here at High Speed Daddy. We're going to provide options uh, for you and, and and help you along the way and walk with you, you know, shoulder to shoulder along the way as well. Because yeah. we're going through love the it. same stuff too right now. Yeah, so. yeah, I love it. And I hope, I hope guys, as you watch this, as you tune in, I hope that, you know, you're not alone. And uh, there's two dads out there that are willing to discuss this stuff. And there's no right or wrong to this. It's really just how you want to, operate your family unit. What's important to you? What's important to your family unit? And uh, Sean, hey, you're welcome. He says, thanks for the advice. And Sean's also got twins on the way. So congrats. Woo, that's amazing. That's amazing. Are they your first? Is this your your firstborn, Sean? You have more coming or, you know, adding to the <laughs> adding to the crew. <laughs> that what it is? Um, but let me know. Um, but yeah, so uh, I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed this. And I, I did find out Craig, I did find mm -hmm. out that Culture Ball with Culture City, okay, our friends at Culture mm -hmm. City who we yes. are simulcasting with, uh, they have rescheduled Culture Ball for March, and Imagine Dragons are going to be okay. performing I at thought, I thought I saw something come across their feed that way, and I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I know you have a little in there at Culture City and whatnot with uh, yeah. the, the owner, Julian, and his wife. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm, you know, so I'm excited you know, for that and yeah. them, and, you know, who knows? We might be able to make an appearance as well. We'll see how everything – works in this crazy world we're in right now and once you know things progress a little bit i'm just trying to figure out you know are, are my kids going back to school right they were still at yeah. that stage just like a lot of a lot of the ones out there uh, yeah. a lot of parents out there and stuff like that i mean we have a thing you know speaking of um the sports classes and whatnot um next week our our kids uh gymnastics place opens back up with certain regulations Ooh, and we're, wow. we're trying to make that decision. Do we want to send them back? Do we not? Do they go back? You know, they have to, you know, stipulation is they have to wear masks while they're there. And I'm thinking, you know, do I want my kid doing gymnastics with a mask on, you know, a lot of, a lot of crazy things going on in the world right now. So it is, we're, it we're is. all Everybody, trying to figure out that way. You got to have your own policy. I'm telling you, just get your own policy as a family. It's just like I say with food, you know, there's so many choices out there. Are you low carb? Are you high carb? Routine? Are you low fat, organic, local, non GMO? What's the most important to you? And the answer is whatever your family decides. Like you guys have to decide together what are your rules. And uh, Craig always talks about these containers, and George talks about containers. I mean, same thing, you know, just be, be aware of what's important to you. Make it happen. Make no exceptions. Don't let anybody come in and change who you are and what you set up for you and your family. And uh, if, if they do question kind of what you're doing, Bring it to the unit. Bring it to the family leaders, you and your your husband, you and your wife, and and just talk about it and uh, figure things out. So, it's uh it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun being a dad. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, fun, listen, come... a lot of fun, a lot of stress, a lot, a lot yeah, of uh, a lot of comedy. A little, <laughs> little bit, a little bit. All right, people, listen. Uh, we're honored to have you here. Uh, come check us out over in the High Speed Daddy Provide Protect Connect private Facebook group. Also, you can learn more about High Speed Daddy and our High Speed products for 
High Speed Parents over at HighSpeedDaddy.com. That is where we have some of the best backpacks, lunch bags, first aid kits, and whoopee blankets for you and your entire family. So check us out. We'll see you soon. Craig, anything else from you? Nope, I'm good. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. Sounds good. See you guys. Bye.